Hey you guys, I'm Lauren Holly. I'm an Atlanta-based cityscape and street photographer. Um, I am at Graphic Nation, that's graphic with a K, on Instagram and all over the interwebs, uh, and graphicnation.com. Um, anyway, I am also the founder and organizer of Atlanta Urban Photo Walkers, or at ATL Urban Photo on Instagram, which is the largest photography meetup in the Atlanta area, so come and join me sometime on a photo walk if you're in Atlanta. Um, the reason that I wanted to make this video today is because I get a lot of questions uh, when I'm out shooting on the street, and then also, you know, like private messages and DMs and... Uh, you know, people ask me kind of a lot, you know, what kind of lens they should buy. I get this specifically from people who are, um, you know, maybe beginners or just kind of, uh, you know, dipping into photography and don't quite know uh, what kind of a lens they should buy if they're looking to get their first prime lens. And it's sort of a loaded question, but there is a little known secret that no one is really talking about out in the world of, uh, you know, digital photography and mirrorless cameras, or at least not enough people are talking about. And that is something called CCTV lenses. So what is a CCTV lens? Well, um, CCTV lenses are closed circuit TV lenses, uh, which is what that stands for. And these days they are pretty much used in security cameras. So like when you go to like uh, the grocery store or the bank and you look in the ceiling and you see a camera pointed at you, that's a CCTV lens. Now these lenses are old school. They have been around for decades. So back in the day they were originally um, used on 16 millimeter film cameras. This is pretty much the smallest and most inexpensive prime lens that you can get for a modern day crop sensor interchangeable lens camera. That's sort of important to note if you're shooting on a full frame camera, CCTV lens not really going to work for you. But most of us, especially if price is uh, a factor, you're probably shooting on a crop sensor. So it's something like, um, you know, an APS-C or a Micro Four Thirds, which is the format that I shoot in. So CCTV lenses will give you a very cinematic look just by design based on that they were built for film cameras. You're going to get like a really beautiful, uh, expensive looking shallow depth of field in a really small price point. You can pick these up on Amazon and eBay for like 25 to like 30, 40 dollars. So at that kind of a price point, when you're comparing it to, you know, modern day lenses that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars and you just don't know what to buy, why spend that money right off the bat when you're not even sure what you want or what you need? So I recommend picking up a CCTV lens or three and you know trying these guys out and then really working on your skills as a photographer sharpening your instincts having these be all in manual it's going to force you to slow down and be more methodical about how you're shooting and you're going to have to actually learn to be a better photographer and you know really focus on getting the best composition and not be so shutter happy and so reliant on auto everything you'll figure out what focal length works the best for you and after spending some time with one of these little guys, then you'll know later where to spend your money when you're ready to buy your first Prime. So let's uh, stop right now and just get into some images and see what these little guys can do. So the first thing I did when I got my first CCTV lens, I really wanted to put it to the test. So I took a photo with a $1,600 Leica Prime lens, and I wanted to compare that to a photo taken with a $33 CCTV lens. And what I was really really hoping for was to see like a really glaringly obvious difference in quality between the two images. And what I think you're actually seeing here, and I'm not going to quite yet disclose which one is which, but I think both of these images portray very well the characteristics and qualities that you would expect to see in a nice image from a prime lens with a wide aperture. So you're seeing like that, you know, really nice shallow depth the field and that soft blur, that real distinction between your subject in the foreground and your background really just falling into that total blur and defocus. The color is very consistent. You know, these are very similar type images. And I would argue that most people and even many photographers couldn't tell the difference between which one of these was shot with a $33 CCTV lens and which one was shot with a $1,600 Leica lens. Now there are 
are a couple of tells and I don't know if you've figured it out yet but I'll go in here and let's zoom in a little closer and I will show you sort of the things you can look for first off this image on the right side was taken with the Leica and this one here on the left was taken with the CCTV lens. And the things that you'll notice about the Leica image are that it's just a little clearer and a little sharper and the details are just a little more pronounced. And you can see that in the face and in the silhouette and then also along this bottom edge. Whereas if you compare those same areas with the CCTV lens, just a little soft here, a little softer in the face, still overall very good. One of the biggest tells though is you can kind of sort to see up here on the hairline sort of the beginnings of something that maybe looks a little bit like a chromatic aberration right around here a little bit on the shoulders but I'd honestly expect to see more of that in a lens of this price point the other final thing that you can look for that's a pretty big tell is the areas of defocus so the background area here and with the Leica lens, you'll see this is just smooth and silky and it's just really soft. And in the CCTV lens, you're kind of seeing these circles. It's a little more of a harsh look. And a lot of prime lenses uh, will kind of look more similar to this than the Leica. But that's a real telltale sign that you've got really nice expensive glass, which is what Leica is. Okay, so if that didn't just like blow you away, um, there's one other detail to point out about the big difference between most prime lenses and CCTV lenses, and that is just sheer size alone. This Leica is a tank. It is enormous and it is heavy. So if you want to lug that around, that's fine, but it is kind of nice to have this really small lightweight option. Anyway, back to Lightroom. Okay, so in sticking with the example of this doll head figure, I wanted to show you the difference between the 35mm and the 25mm CCTV lens. Now apart from the wider angle, you can also see sort of a little bit of barrel distortion here, like along the table, and that's leading into this sort of circular movement that's happening in the background, specifically in those areas of defocus. That's sort of commonly referred to as swirly bouquet. You can google that. This is kind of just naturally occurring in the lens here, and you really see it uh, in images where there's foliage or like maybe even uh, city lights at night but you're getting this sort of artistic almost painterly look here this image uh, looks like an impressionist painting and here uh, with these kind of like light flares giving you like even a more pronounced circular effect. Now you can pick up some more modern like art cinema lenses these days that are being made to try and replicate what's sort of naturally occurring here out of this $25 lens and these lenses can cost like hundreds of dollars. So this is just a really beautiful artistic effect that you're getting from this $25 millimeter which is just incredible. So one other sort of important thing to note about the 25 millimeter if you'll notice like around in the corners you'll see this sort of vignette happening and I point that out because this was taken on a micro four thirds camera which is a small type sensor and if you're shooting with an APS-C sensor that's larger than a micro four thirds that vignette is going to get pretty big and pretty obnoxious. So it's not like you can't use this on an APS-C camera, but you're just going to have to like crop that out and forego some resolution if you want to eliminate it. Now, if you're just like, I can't deal with that at all, and you just really don't want to have any vignette at all, the other option was be just to skip the 25 millimeter lens and go straight to the 35 millimeter lens or maybe even the 50 millimeter lens. So one last example I wanted to share. When I first got my CCTV lens, I had read about the flaws in the lenses and that they could be inconsistent and you could get soft spots and you know blur in the corners and such. So I did this litmus test where I went and I took this picture. I took one that was in focus, very straightforward, um, which is this one over here on the left. And then I also shot the same photo with that shallow depth of field, you know, and really getting uh, that sort of blurred background. I wanted to compare those two images. And as it turns out, that 
looks to be true with this 35 millimeter that I have. You can see it's soft in the corners. Uh, it's pretty sharp in places. Looks like there's a soft spot here. But this lens certainly has some flaws to it. But the interesting thing is that I performed the same litmus test with the 50 millimeter on a different day where I shot the shallow depth of field image and then I shot the straightforward image. And this one actually turns out much better on the 50 millimeter. It's much sharper, it's much cleaner. Um, not really seeing those soft spots. You can see that it's very sharp throughout. So I don't really know if I was perhaps at a different aperture or if there's a difference between the 50 millimeter and the 35 millimeter altogether, or if it's just that the particular copy of the 35 millimeter that I have may be more flawed than most. I'm not quite sure. But what I would say is this. This isn't usually the type of image that you're going to want to take with a CCTV lens anyway. Um, you could certainly get a picture with edge to edge sharpness with your kit lens. So I would probably just do that. And then I would throw on the CCTV lens when I'm going for this more artistic, uh, you know, shallow depth of field look. Okay. So now that you've seen some photos that I've been able to make with my CCTV lenses, I thought we could look at some video. So just so you know, I haven't been shooting this on a CCTV lens so far. And the reason for that is really just about having uh, the appropriate focal length for the kind of shot uh, that I wanted to get. And the CCTV lenses, they're a little zoomed in. It's a little too close for comfort. I don't have an assistant helping me, so I need my camera within arm's length distance, you know, so that I can operate it easily. So that's the main reason that I've been shooting with a different lens. But let's say that I were shooting, um, you know, this environment here on CCTV. What would that actually look like? Okay, so I switched out for the 25 millimeter uh, CCTV lens, which is awkwardly close, but you can really see that sort of swirl effect um, and that circular motion. The background and the blur is crazy. Uh, I'm fully uh, open at the aperture of 1.4, which is just insane here, uh, but it's actually just a little too dramatic. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to stop this down a little bit and my camera should adjust for that, but now I'm stopping it down. I think now you can see a little bit more detail in focus and you're still getting a nice uh, sort of shallow depth of field, but this feels a little bit better. This really gives you an idea of the type of effect that you can get with these lenses at a really low cost. It's kind of incredible. Um, so just for comparison, uh, let's get even a little more awkward and I'm gonna throw on the 35 millimeter and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I just threw on the 35 millimeter so you could kind of see the difference here. So you're not really getting that circular motion or that barrel distortion that you get in the 25 millimeter. The 35 millimeter gives you a little bit more of a normal or natural look. And even though it's a little too close for comfort uh, right here, um, you're going to be able to use this lens as a go-to portrait lens if you don't already have one. Um, it's pretty amazing that you could uh, find a lens for about the $30 price point and get like this sort of quality uh, and cinematic look. It's just incredible. The other thing even though it seems like I'm awkwardly close, I'm actually not even at the minimum focusing distance for this lens. The 35 millimeter is actually my favorite because of how close you can actually get when using it. Uh, so you can treat this almost like a little mini macro um, and get really, really close. So I'm about maybe 15 inches away now, but if I were to actually move in as close as I can get, um, and just bear with me, it's gonna get a little awkward, uh, but I just kinda wanna show you what you can actually do with this lens. So this is the minimum focusing distance on the 35, and even though it's it, it's not really 
something that I would use for a shot like this. It's pretty incredible that you can get a shot like this with a lens that costs only $30 on Amazon. Um, I mean, that's just insane to be able to get, you know, the glare in the eye and to be able to get this tight. I'm actually probably about 10 inches away from the lens at this point. Um, and once you start throwing like the macro rings on top of this, it's just insane the things that you can do. Okay, so you know that I had to do it, right? Now I can't even see because I'm so close to the lens that I can't really even tell if it's in focus or not. But holy crap, that is amazing. Where is my focus? There we are. Okay. So this is one macro ring. Now, can you even imagine how close I could get if I were to put two macro rings on this thing? Mind blowing. Okay, so this is pretty much like no way, Jose. Like, I cannot even. That is insane. Can't even tell if it's in focus. Anyway, two macro rings. Whoa. Oh my gosh. That was crazy. Okay, so let me show you this setup real quick. Here's my Sony a6000. You're going to want to order a CCTV lens that has the right mount for your camera. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's just a sort of like, you know, little ring type thing. This one's for the Sony and you're just going to pop it in here like that and you'll see this opening right here. That's where you're going to mount your CCTV lens just like so and it has a little screw mount on it. You just screw it on in. Um, but the cool thing, you're going to want to get some of these little macro rings. Here's what they look like. It's just this little sort of spacer that you would put right on the adapter. And then you would put your CCTV lens on here. Okay. And with the macro ring on, it just creates a little bit of space. It pushes that lens just far enough away from the sensor and it gives you the ability to zoom in like that. So you can stack these macro rings. So I had, uh, in the example, I stacked uh, two macro rings for that final shot. Uh, so get some of these little macro rings and you know, have fun with it. All right, you guys. Now I know this has been like a really long video. So thanks for sticking into the end if you made it this long. Um, I hope that you find a good CCTV lens. I've got some links to my Amazon affiliate page down below. So if you want to check those links out and shop gear on my Amazon affiliate page, your support is very much appreciated. So you can give me a thumbs up if you like this video or you can give me a follow because I'm going to try to make some more of these and hopefully they're not going to be as long. Um, but that's it for today. So thanks for tuning in and sticking around this long um, and I'll see you next time.